Welcome to the Wiser Wealth Roundtable, where we believe the best financial advice is always conflict-free. I'm Brad Lyons, and with me is Matthews Barnett. Hi, Matthews. How's it going? Doing great. Today, we'll be guiding you to financial freedom with today's talk, which is a little unusual. Uh, it's different from our normal approach uh, to guiding people to financial freedom in retirement. We're going to talk about using our wealth in retirement in a way that perhaps you haven't heard about in before. The idea is we're going to leverage our wealth in by tapping into its collateral capability to borrow money to fund major purchases or events that we want to, to fund in our retirements or or other times in our lives using the assets that we have in our portfolios. This is a strategy that's been around a while. It's usually used by people who have a significant wealth and significant valuations in their portfolios. You know, I don't necessarily have a specific dollar amount in mind here, but it's generally for folks who have uh, accumulated a tremendous amount of wealth throughout their lifetime and uh, now want to utilize the wealth as a collateral in order to fund purchases that they may want to make. And we'll get a little into that a little bit as we go through there. This basically is called securities-based lending. Yes, yeah, so securities-based loans. Uh, I saw a good article on this. They called it the bank of me. And these operate a little differently than other various loans. But uh, in a nutshell, you're really using uh, your own securities as collateral for the loan. So based on the value of your investable assets, you're able to pledge those at certain banks based on the broker-dealer that you're using. Uh, and you're able to pledge those assets for these uh, types of loans. You know, in, in retirement, you know, by definition, we no longer have as much earned income as we had during our working years. And so when a, you go to a bank and you want to borrow money, or you go to any lending institution want to borrow money, they're going to look at our earned income as our ability to repay. And as reti we move into retirement, that earned income goes down. And so we may, may not be able to borrow as much money as we have been able to during our working years that we could support through our earned income and our payback. So utilizing collateral assets such as stocks, bonds, we can borrow money and use that to fund purchases and then spread the payment period out over longer periods or continue to defer it until some other event occurs in our lives. That's right. So we, we see this a lot, like you mentioned, with retirees, whether it be they're using this as their primary mortgage because they don't actually have access to traditional mortgage because they are uh, retired and with the increased uh, scrutiny uh, behind mortgages these days with income requirements. Uh, or you could see it as just type of, type of bridge loan almost for a, a future purchase. So what we're doing is we're funding purchases today with cash flows in the future that may come in the future. So we're matching our liabilities with our cash flows in, in, in the future, which is the opposite of what I was accustomed to when I came to this firm from the institutional money management world where we manage pensions in that we fund liabilities in the future with current cash deposits today. So we're doing it simply in reverse. We're funding a liability you know, with a future cash flow. So we're buying it today and paying for it in the future, and we're leveraging the wealth that we have in order to do that. You know, some of the things that we might be able to buy, as you mentioned, a home. You know, as a listener might think, why would I do that? Why wouldn't I just pay for it, you know, out of the wealth that I've accumulated over time? Why would I use this method where I'm going to pay some interest to a lending institution when I have the money sitting right here in my portfolio? Right. So let's go to example of, so obviously we talk about usually trying to have your home paid off. So if that were the case, uh, and you were looking, this, this is for the high net worth usually, so, Again, with, yes. so take that into consideration. Let's consider that you wanted a $2 million out of your account to, to fund a big purchase like a home. That would be about $476,000 in capital gains under the current tax laws if you were to uh, have the 23.8% capital gains tax. But assuming a 6% rate on that $2 million over 20 years, would that value would actually be $6.4 million. So that becomes the opportunity cost, the opportunity lost by not having that money continuously invested. Right. Rather than pay 476000 in capital gains and have cashed out on $2 million that in 20 years becomes $6.4 million, you could get an asset-based loan on that $2 million as long as you're you know, the value of your assets was probably four plus million dollars. And then you could take that loan and you could either turn that into just a monthly payment and amortize that like a normal mortgage, just have monthly payments in perpetuity. Or like we've said, you can kind of bridge that for any future purchase uh, or future transaction where you might have uh, some type of lump sum that you could just completely pay it off. That's right. You may just be, in this instance, deferring a capital gain into a different tax year because 
This can also be used for a tax planning methodology here, utilizing the asset to borrow money to fund a purchase today without actually incurring any taxes that go along with the sell of assets in order to liquidate and create that cash. You're just pushing it off until a different tax year, right? That's a perfectly legitimate method of a reason for utilizing a securities-based lending arrangement in order to, to live for today and pay for it in the future. Now, now again, we're talking about people with significant assets here where those assets are being held by the broker-dealer in lieu of any other collateral you know, for, for this loan. Another reason that people may want to do this is uh, for planning a family extravagant trip that creates memories that last a lifetime. Rather than paying up front with cash, they can borrow the money utilize the securities-based lending method, pay for the trip, pay it off over a period of time. Shoot, maybe they're just utilizing the dividends from the security that they're, or interest payments that they, from the security that they're collateralizing. I mean, you're just matching cash flows and, and, and liabilities at this point. That's right. It really could be any type of purchase. You see a lot of times with uh, collectible cars with clients really enjoy that or uh, even really big purchases like a, a yacht or, or, or a plane or something like that. I mean, it can be whatever big purchase it is, but the whole point is you're just delaying having to pay those capital gains up front uh, and the opportunity cost of what that could grow to in the future by deciding if you want to pay that off now or, or in the future um, with those monthly payments. You know, it's a way for, for expanding the use of a portfolio rather than simply just to pay income to retirees. It's expanding the usage of that portfolio to fund other objectives as well. Here at Wiser Wealth, Matthew, we see people who come through who have very large portfolios and have tremendous capital gains in those portfolios. And they're hesitant to make any sort of transaction in those portfolios at times because of the capital gains liability that may occur when they do that. So effectively, they're locking up that portfolio so it has no usage whatsoever other than as a asset on their on their balance sheet, okay? Asset-based lending is a way to unlock the potential of a portfolio of that manner in order to fund things today that can be paid off in future years or future timeframes by utilizing a lower tax bracket in retirement, hopefully, and to pay it off but use the money today. So it's tapping a resource that, that may not have been thought to been able to have tapped in before. Yeah, it, it kind of referred to paper profits. And it's the reason why over the last year, it's been uh, increasing in popularity, uh, specifically because your account values have increased so much that you've kind of taken those profits and looked at other opportunities besides selling, but to supplement your lifestyle. According to a FINRA study, uh, over the last year, the loans have increased actually about 51%. So they've gone from uh, $585 billion a year ago to over $882 billion uh, as of June of this year. So significantly increasing in popularity. And a lot of that goes back to they've been around for a while, but just the fact of with the way the stock market has performed over the last year that provides some opportunities for clients. That's right. And, and these are not necessarily term-based loans, are they? The payments can be deferred for practically infinity. I mean, for a very, very long time. So some people have kind of coined this strategy as a, as a what? I think we saw a buy and die strategy. Uh, a borrow, buy, and die is borrow, what is it is. Yeah. And, and I understand what they're saying here because at that point in time, well, if you make that decision to borrow and buy something under today's current tax code at death, those asset valuations are stepped up to current value. If they're sold at that point in time to pay off the loan, there's no tax liability whatsoever. So it's a, a great idea for people who have the resources have the desire, have the capability of, of managing this. But of course, there are going to be some downsides to this. I mean, anytime you're dealing with an asset that has fluctuation of price valuation, we may find ourselves being a little upside down, it may refer to as in terms of the valuation of the loan relative to the collateral. That's right, because obviously most uh, firms aren't going to give you a 100% loan on the base uh, on the value of your assets. So usually they'll pledge up to you know, 90, 95% possibly on certain treasuries or, or fixed income assets and up to 50% or so on certain equity investments. So usually uh, most firms will not allow you to take more than about 50% on average as a loan based on your, your portfolio. But having said that, um, you know, there always is the option that you take out 50% uh, loan on the on that and uh, the market drops, there could be a call similar to a margin call with margin call being if you did that to purchase securities, 
This is the purchase of other uh, other personal assets. Uh, but you can still have a, a call if, if the account value drops below what your loan value was. That's right. They can ask you to pledge additional capital collateral, which could either be in cash or in terms of other securities. They may be forced to to sell certain securities. In which order is what to you're find, trying to avoid in the first place. Which is what you're trying to avoid in the first place. But, but nonetheless, you know, that, that can happen. So that's definitely a downside that, that you want to look into. But why would brokerage firm you know, advocate for this type of securities lending program? What's in it for them? Well, it's usually some type of double dipping because a lot of times they are connected to a bank, so they're able to keep the assets there. It's also sticky business because rather than you sell $2 million in your assets, you're able to keep $2 million of your assets there while you're taking out a loan that you're paying down. So it works out great for them uh, and the fact that you aren't cashing out your, your portfolio values. You know, and the other thing is that, you know, wealth is not created by trading. So quite often in these types of accounts and these types of portfolio, these securities may have been held for a very long time. If they were involved with an IPO at one time, if they were inherited securities, if they were securities that had been purchased and, and just held for like this, the Warren Buffett approach, right? Buy it as if you're going to hold it forever. And so the capital gains are, can be very high in these portfolios. So there's very little trading going on. So this is another revenue stream for brokerage firms and lending institutions. That's right. I mean, we, we try to tax efficiently trade when possible, but like you said, if there's low cost basis on these funds, there's really not a lot you can do sometimes. That's right. It's a method of, of unlocking and unleashing the potential of a portfolio for people who are affluent, high net worth, and it can be used for multiple things. It can be used again to fund extravagant purchases, homes, matching a future uh, uh, liability against a current cost basis. So it's something that people can look into. It's something that is offered at a lot of brokerage firms. Even with at our firm, at T, we utilize TD Ameritrade as our custodian. They offer it, I believe, right? Uh, yeah, not through the broker, through TD Bank. So because it is a bank affiliate, uh, we offer that. But yeah, you usually see this with FINRA type uh, broker dealers. The only other con I would think of is the issue of you are highly leveraged. So a lot of times, like we said, you could use this as a bridge loan. So you, you see uh, some type of sell in the future where you could actually purchase this up front. Uh, you're kind of bridging the gap from the day. Uh, on that future purchase and that windfall that you might have. If that windfall were not to happen and you're stuck with that loan, uh, you have a significant loan that you're having to pay monthly payments on. So if you are using this as a type of bridge loan from the day uh, with a future windfall to pay the loan off completely, you just need to be sure that that's actually going to be something that can occur and it's not speculative. The idea of uh, the uncertainty of a future event is something that needs to be considered in, in this. Uh, and I'm sure that between the uh, the investor and the advisor that needs to be fully worked out and understood what the possible probabilities are of a of a non-event that you're planning on having been an event. So that's something that needs to be considered whenever you're thinking about this. Again, I want to want to review it. This is not margin, is it? We're not talking about margin. Margin is a completely different sort of lending arrangement. It's within the brokerage account itself, margin is borrowing against the securities in the account in order to buy more securities in the account. It's not necessarily used for purchasing things outside of the account. Right. This was called a non-purpose loan. So you're not buying securities. You're not allowed to actually on these loans. So the yeah. whole purpose of it is for transactions, certain purchases in the future that aren't securities related. Right. And look, if you're, if, if you're buying another asset, a yacht, <laughs> a home, a, a vintage sports car, I think we saw in, in this article, mm -hmm. um, these things have value in and of themselves. So if they're sold, the money can be paid back, you know, to the loan to pay off the loan as well. So that you're exchanging an asset for an asset at this point. You know, you're you're leveraging an asset to buy another asset. It's uh, not it's, a security. It's not a security necessarily, no. Right. But it's something that does have value that can be sold to repay the the loan itself, and then the portfolio is whole at that point in time once again. An interesting uh, uh, conversation, an interesting strategy for maximizing the potential of a portfolio. There are certain ways to, you know, that to do this in order to make sure that it's done properly to minimize the risk of borrowing against a variable-based uh, price security and make sure that it's being used for an asset that on the other side there has valuation you know, that when you want to sell it in order to pay down the loan if that's the case. So I think it's a great idea. Uh, it can be used if used properly. We've seen it. Uh, especially when we're, we have a homeowner who's moving from one house to buying or building another house, and they don't know exactly what that time frame is going to be, and they don't necessarily want to get into a mortgage arrangement, but they have the portfolio. They don't want to sell it because when they sell the, the existing home, 
they're going to just pay off the next home that's being built right now. So this, like I said, is a great way to bridge, you know, that uh, liability in our, our balance sheets. That's right. I mean, usually this is a different conversation we're having. We want all debts paid off, specifically the mortgage. But there are certain cases with high income earners, as well as people that have built up a, a, a big nest egg here, that there's proper ways to, to leverage your wealth in order to build more wealth. You know, we've used this term in the past, leverage, which is the proper use of, of debt. You know, generally it's thought of when it's buying a home, real estate. You put down 10 or 20 percent, you borrow the rest and leverage it over the next 20, 30 years in order to pay it down. So debt uh, in and of itself is not bad. The improper use of it is is not good for our finances. But the proper use of debt through leverage can be a great way to expand our wealth and expand the capabilities of our portfolios to fund our desires in life and our retirement and our families and our dreams, you know, can be a great thing. That's right. Mention it proper. As long as she's proper and planned out, then uh, th these can be good opportunities for the certain clients. Matthew's great talk today. A little interesting topic, leveraging your wealth in retirement. We can utilize this, you know, in, in different manners to fund our retirement dreams and goals for people with high net worth uh, portfolios. So great talk. Look forward to seeing you again next time. Appreciate it. Enjoyed it. Thanks for listening to the Wiser Roundtable podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe wherever you're listening. That way you don't miss out on new episodes. Head to wiserinvestor.com and reach out if you have any questions. We would love to hear from you. Today's episode was produced and edited by Lilton Moore. Wiser Wealth Management Incorporated is a registered investment advisor. Information presented is for educational purposes only and does not intend to make an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any specific securities, investments, or investment strategies. Investments involve risk and unless otherwise stated are not guaranteed. Be sure to first consult with a qualified financial advisor and or tax professional before implementing any strategy discussed herein. Past performance is not indicative of future performance.